heat my hungry soul shall fear. Then sweeping up to glory, I'll see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. Hallelujah! He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen. Amen. All right, James. Blessed to be in the house of the Lord today. Yes, it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This song was written out of that master car up in Philadelphia about that synagogue. The Lord put it in my heart and He gave me this song. It's called I Love Israel. Amen. Amen. So should you. Times where we ought to be loving Israel and Jerusalem. Amen. 
Amen. Good evening, Saints. Good Good to be with everyone once again. And, uh, I'd like to thank everyone that prayed uh, for my safe trip to and from the great state of Michigan. And so, uh, raise your hand if you've ever been to Michigan before. Anybody? I've been there before. Just a couple of you, okay. Uh, I had never been there before, and so that was my first time going. And so, uh, I flew out of Norfolk and uh, landed in Detroit. And uh, like I was telling the folks at Lighthouse Baptist Church on Wednesday night, when I left Norfolk uh, on uh, Tuesday morning, uh, it was uh, 77 degrees. <laughs> when I stepped off the plane there in Detroit, it wasn't 77 degrees no more. <laughs> and so uh, it was uh, quite chilly. Of course, uh, uh, like I was telling them, I didn't realize that uh, Detroit is basically right across the water from Toronto, Canada. I mean, right. you're within like a 20-minute drive right. of the Canadian border. And so it's very common for the folks there uh, to go back and forth uh, between uh, the U.S. and Canada. And as a matter of fact, Brother Leggett showed me his driver's license. In Michigan, you've got passport information on your driver's license uh, because of how close they are to the Canadian border. So uh, uh, that was a very uh, interesting experience. But uh, um, I drove up there, or flew up there, uh, to uh, meet with Brother Ron Leggett. And uh, Brother Leggett, uh, uh, the Lord laid on his heart uh, to give me his pastoral library. And so I picked up about uh, 20 cases of books while I was up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, at any rate, just a, a real blessing. Uh, going to his house is like a museum. Oh, and wow. so uh, uh, when you walk into his house, uh, he's got a gas-lit chandelier that was in the mansion of Robert E. Lee's father. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. He's got a phonograph, a couple of them in his house that, that Edison made. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, uh, it was crazy stuff. And then, of course, uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, very close to Dr. Ruckman, so he had all kinds of good stuff uh, for Dr. Ruckman. Uh, you may have seen that, that one picture I posted on Facebook. Uh, it was a picture uh, of, a, of me holding a book. There's only one in existence. Uh, Doc made this when he was 21 years old, about six years before he got saved. Mm -hmm. And uh, right before he died, uh, he pulled that thing out of the safe and gave it to his son, Michael. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, Brother Leggett was saying there's only about four or five folks that have ever seen that thing in person. And, uh, and now I get to be one of those folks. And so uh, uh, very, very humbling, uh, you know, experience uh, to have a chance to, uh, to see some of that stuff. Uh, but while I was there, uh, you know, uh, tremendous hospitality. They took me to the Henry Ford Museum. And what do you think you would see at the Henry Ford Museum? Cars. Cars. Cars, right? Right. Let me say something to you. They had cars in there, but you wouldn't believe the stuff they had in there. I got in there and on display... They had the actual chair from Ford Theater where Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Oh. The actual chair he was wow. sitting in when he died. Man. Well, not when he died, because he died later on, but yeah. where he was shot. Yeah. Wow. Um, Y'all remember Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. you know, who yeah. refused to give up her seat on the bus there in the Civil Rights era. Wow. They had the actual bus wow. on display that mm -hmm. she was riding when she refused to give up that seat. And so I went there, you know, and I'm not much of a car person, just to be honest with you. And when I am a car person, I'm more of a Chevy guy than a Ford guy. <laughs> you know, I've always thought the Ford meant found on the road dead. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I was just pleasantly surprised at, at, at all the interesting stuff they had there at that museum. So if you ever find yourself in the Dearborn, Michigan area, uh, by the way, we drove past the largest mosque in the United States there in Dearborn. Boy, a, a tremendous Muslim uh, influence up there. Um, but uh, at any rate, just uh, if you find yourself in that area, you got to check out the Henry Ford Museum. There's like a whole village around this thing, and so it. <laughs> but then, um, uh, Brother Leggett, uh, uh, he was the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church, but about two and a half years ago, he turned the church over to Chad Reese, um, you know, uh, who's now the pastor uh, because of health reasons. And uh, Brother Chad had me preach on uh, uh, Wednesday night. And so uh, I had a good time. I, I spoke on the subject of uh, the devil's device of discouragement, uh, that how the, in the, these end times uh, Satan seeks to wear out the saints. And so that message uh, is online. They recorded it. 
And so uh, if you uh, would like to hear that, uh, send me a message or a text and I'll, I'll shoot you the link. And I hope that that message might be a blessing to you. But uh, uh, thank God for a safe trip up there and a safe trip driving back. Uh, drove back with a U-Haul with all these books. And uh, boy, don't drive through Ohio and Pennsylvania. I spent about $50 in tolls. $50. It was, uh, you know, I, I thought it was bad here in Hampton Roads. My goodness, stay, stay off the Ohio Turnpike. Uh, I literally, as I was crossing from Ohio into Pennsylvania, I paid Ohio before I crossed the border. I didn't get two miles down the road into Pennsylvania before they wanted some money too. I was like, hey, I just paid them other crooks about two miles back. <laughs> and so uh, nevertheless, uh, well, the Lord gave us uh, safety, and uh, I'm just uh, I'm gl grateful to be back and, and with you here tonight. And if you weren't here earlier, um, uh, I've got uh, some pages on display that I'd like to show you if you didn't see them some actual pages uh, from the Bishop's Bible, the Matthew's Bible, and an actual page from a 1611 King James Bible. So if you've never seen an actual page uh, from a 1611 King James Bible, uh, see me after the service and I'll show it to you. Uh, I got here a little early tonight and showed it to a few folks, but if you weren't one of those few, uh, let me know after the service. I'll be glad to show it to you as well. All right, Daniel chapter 3 tonight. Daniel chapter 3. Now, of course, uh, uh, I've been preaching my way through the Gospel of John. And uh, the last time uh, I was with you, we uh, spoke from uh, John chapter 6, and we talked about uh, weathering the storms of life. And uh, I like to try to mix it up a little bit, you know, as far as uh, how the Lord leads. And so uh, verse, uh, uh, verses uh, uh, John getting stale because we hear from John all the time. Every once in a while, I like to try to mix in something just a little bit different. And so uh, Daniel chapter 3, this is a message that's been on my mind all week. Um, I thought about uh, preaching this uh, when I was uh, up in Michigan with Brother Chad Reese's church, uh, but the Lord led me in a different direction. And so uh, I think the reason why the Lord did that was because he intended uh, this message for here uh, for tonight. Amen. And so y'all are getting something fresh. You're not getting somebody else's leftovers. Amen. What did you say? Daniel chapter, uh, Daniel chapter three. 3. Daniel chapter 3. Now, I want to read the last couple of verses of, of Daniel chapter 2 to kind of set a context. Now, you know what happened in Daniel chapter 2. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, and he's troubled by the dream, and none of his magicians, Chaldeans, and sorcerers can give him the interpretation, right. and so he wants to kill them all because he's upset with them, and then he uh, brings in Daniel, and Daniel, God gives Daniel the interpretation, and then Daniel shares that interpretation with the king. And so uh, the king is so excited that Daniel is able to tell him what this vision means. It says, verse 46, uh, Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel. Now that's a problem. And you know what the problem is? Is that Daniel doesn't rebuke him for it. Remember when Cornelius fell on his uh, knees before Peter and tried to worship Peter? What did Peter do? Yeah. Jerked him up. He said, right. get up. I myself also am a man, man. just like you. Right. And so uh, here Daniel, I don't know if he thought he was the Pope or what, <laughs> uh, but he, uh, he lets Nebuchadnezzar worship him. Mm -hmm. And so it says he worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Now there's no indication at all here that Daniel protested this act. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth uh, it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of lords and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. And so uh, Daniel gets promoted to great power, great position, and great authority because of his ability to interpret this dream. But something unique happens here because as we move into chapter 3, we don't find Daniel mentioned at all. Matter of fact, Daniel doesn't show back up till chapter 4. And so uh, I kind of wonder if the Lord didn't do that on purpose, Brother Gibson, as far as maybe uh, let Daniel go sit down for a little while and take the spotlight off of him because maybe he got a little bit too full of himself letting King Nebuchadnezzar worship him. I don't know. I'm just kind of speculating. Uh, that's uh, something I'd like to ask about when I get to heaven. But Daniel chapter 3 is unique in the book of Daniel because it doesn't mention Daniel. All the other chapters mention Daniel. But chapter 3, Daniel is nowhere to be found. And so the reason why I believe that is, is because at the end of chapter 2, 
Daniel may have got himself in just a little bit of trouble with the Lord. So, again, I want to reiterate that's uh, speculation on my part, and you may have a different take on that. And if you do, that's fine. We can still be friends. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 3. Now it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, that's 60 cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. Better watch out for them sixes, amen? He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now, uh, you may have already noticed how very similar this is to what we read in Revelation chapter 13. How that the Antichrist, of whom Nebuchadnezzar clearly is a type of, sets up an image and then commands that people fall down and worship that image yeah. or else they will be put to death. Yeah. Let's watch these similarities, uh, similarities continue. Verse 3. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. Mm. So notice uh, this is a worship service, and the worship service is complete with music. And so you always have to watch out for music. Mm -hmm. Music's a dangerous thing. Sure uh, music's a dangerous thing because of where it originates yeah. and who it originates with. Uh, listen here, Satan, before he was Satan, was Lucifer. Yep. And he was the anointed cherub that covered the throne of God. Yeah. And in his being were tabrets and pipes that were part of his being. Uh, well, listen here, when the morning stars sang at the foundation of this earth, it was old Lucifer, the choir director, that was leading them. Mm -hmm. And so you better watch out for music because music can be, not always, but can be a tool of the devil for deception. That's right. Uh, listen here. Music has a powerful uh, grip on many people. Uh, many people would rather die than give up whatever genre of music that they choose to listen to. Yeah. And so music's a very powerful force. Uh, listen here. Uh, when uh, a young man wants to try to have his way with a young lady, what's he do? He puts on some kind of romantic music to try to get her in the mood. Uh, listen here, uh, when a restaurant is serving you lunch, uh, they want you to get in and they want you to get out, and so they play a faster-paced music. You mark my words, you go into a restaurant, they're p playing fast-paced music. Yeah. But you know yeah. what? You can go back to that same restaurant that evening when it's dinner time and people slow down and take their time over their supper, and that same restaurant will be playing a slower-paced music. You know why? Whether we realize it or not, subconsciously, music yeah. has power and impact. Uh, you know, as far as Hollywood movies, all these action-adventure movies and things like that, science fiction films like Star Wars and Star Trek and things like that, what would those movies be without those music soundtracks to stir up your emotions as you watch those action sequences taking place? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Music's a powerful force, good. folks. It can be a powerful force for good as far as hymns, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Yeah, come on. Or it can be a powerful source for evil as yeah. far as the things of this flesh. Right. Got to watch it. Oh, Clearly, oh. here in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar wants people to fall down and worship this image. So you know what he's done? Uh, he's brought the praise team up on the stage. That's right. Uh, he's got the strobe lights going, just like in a concert. Uh, he's probably got the, the smoke machines, <laughs> you know, pushing the smoke and all that. And boy, they're just drumming away as they worship this image. And so it says, uh, verse uh, 6, Whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And so it's worship or else. 
Therefore at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. You know, the same thing is going to happen in the future. You know, eventually the trumpet's going to sound. Uh, we're going to hear the voice of the archangel, and we're going to rise to meet him in the air after he says, come up hither. We're going to meet the Lord in the clouds. The dead in Christ, uh, Christ are going to rise first, and then we, uh, which are alive and remain, shall join them in the clouds, and we're going to go off with them to heaven, and the judgment seat of Christ is going to take place in the third heaven while the tribulation period takes place on this earth. And while that time is going on, uh, listen here, a fellow named the Antichrist is going to come to power, and he's going to reign over this earth, he's going to rule over this earth, and he's going to have a false prophet, and that false prophet is going to make a move to make an image to this beast, the Antichrist, and he's going to command that everybody bow down and worship that beast, and you can say what you want to, if you don't, you'll be put to death. That's right. That's exactly true. Revelation 13 is plain. Yes, sure is. The Bible's not hard to understand. It's just a hard book to believe. <laughs> That's the problem. Oh, I can't understand the Bible. Oh, no, you dirty, rotten sinner, you understand it just fine. You just don't like what you read. That's right. yeah. Because if what you read is true, you're in a world of hurt. Oh, yeah. And so only in that day, they're not going to be throwing you into a burning, fiery furnace or cut your head off. That's right. That's what it says. It says verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh, notice that Satan always has his microscope, telescope, and zoom lens on the Jews. He's always looking for a way to persecute the Jews. You know why? They're God's chosen people. They're the apple of his eye. I appreciate the song that James sang tonight as far as loving Israel, loving Jerusalem. Uh, listen here. Uh, we've got wolves that have come into our Baptist circles. These are wolves in sheep clothing. Uh, they're preaching the heresy of replacement theology. And they're trying to say that God is done with Israel. That all the unfulfilled promises of Israel now belong to the church. And that we are Israel. Uh, I've got news for you. There's a division between the Jews. Jew, the Gentile, and the church of God. That Bible says that you have to study to show yourself approved Amen. unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you better understand that God is not done with Israel. You're See, God he's God. still going to save the nation of Israel. Amen, brother. He's not done with them. He's going to restore them. And listen here, I don't even have time tonight to get into all the passages that talk about the restoration of Israel, and it boggles the mind that anyone that claims to be a Baptist preacher, hello, Stephen Anderson, <laughs> boggles the mind that anybody could be so deceived as to not see the plain text of the Scripture as far as God's future plans for the nation of Israel. Amen, brother. But Satan is always looking for an excuse to persecute the Jews. Always. What happened here to the, this last week in that synagogue? Yeah. And poor folks gathered together at the synagogue. I believe they said it was for a baby dedication, if I remember the news correctly. Mm -hmm. Gathered there for a baby dedication. And some madman comes in there with a gun and killed, uh, what was it, 13 of them, I guess? Yeah. 12 or 13, 13 of them. Right. And so uh, 13, the number of rebellion. Yeah. I wonder if that's not a coincidence. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Listen here. Uh, that fellow was probably full of about 10 demons. Now, of course, I know demon ain't a King James Bible or devil, whatever you want to call them. Unclean spirits. Yeah, unclean yeah. Spirit. He was probably full of legion when he went in there. Sad, though. Verse 13. Let's find out the king's reaction once he founds out about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. So they've been called on the carpet. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, then at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Hey, king, <laughs> we ain't worried. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Uh, Jesus said, Fear not them that kill, but afterwards have no more power. Amen. He said, Fear the one that has power, Amen. that after he is killed, can cast into hell. Yeah. You know what? Uh, they can put you in a burning, fiery furnace, and they can burn you to a crisp, but after that, they have no power. Over no you. power. They can burn you at a stake. They can chop your head off. They can blow your brains out with a 12-gauge shotgun. Uh, they can do whatever they want to. Once they have extinguished your physical life, they no longer have any power over you because you are in the hands <coughs> of the living God. Amen. Amen. You know what there? Uh, it says there, uh, he will deliver us out of thine hand, okay? Because even if you kill us, <laughs> We're going to be with him. That's right. Go ahead. Make my day, yeah, as Dirty yeah. Harry might say. There you go, bro. Good preaching. <laughs> but if not, verse 18, if he don't deliver us, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, Amen. nor worship the golden image Praise which thou Lord. hast set up. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Character. Yeah. We ain't going to do it. You can't scare us, and you don't intimidate us. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember back in chapter 2, in verse uh, 49, it said that at Daniel's request, the king had set up these three men over the affairs of the province of Babylon. And so he had not promoted them as highly as he had promoted Daniel, but he had lifted them to great positions of authority. And so Nebuchadnezzar previously liked these fellows because Daniel asked for them to be promoted, and because he had such great guard, regard for Daniel, he, he heeded Daniel's request. But now his visage has changed, kind of like in the tribulation. You see, the Antichrist, when he first comes to power, peaceably by flatteries and politically. You see, Daniel gives you his political rise. Revelation gives you his spiritual rise. Uh, when he first comes to power, he's going to speak softly and peaceably to Israel. But boy, in the middle of that week, yeah. the middle of Daniel's 70th week, somebody's going to kill him. They're going to assassinate him. Yeah, he's going to come back. And if I got it right like I think I got it right, he's going to stay dead for three days and three nights. He's going to come back. And on the third and glorious day, he's going to rise again, mocking the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when he does, Satan himself in the person of Judas Iscariot will come inside the body of the Antichrist. And even as Jesus was the mystery of godliness and was God incarnate, now we will have the mystery of iniquity and we will have Satan. And Satan incarnate will have three and a half years to destroy everything he can possibly destroy on this earth. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. For the devil has come down having great wrath, for he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Times, time, and half a time. A thousand three hundred and two score days, three and a half years. And so his visage is going to be changed, just like Nebuchadnezzar's is changed here. Therefore he spake, verse 19, and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. 
Oh, you fellas have really made me mad now because whatever temperature that furnace normally was at, I'm going to make it seven times hotter now. Listen here. Uh, he is wanting to melt them like a nuclear bomb. Uh, he's wanting their flesh to come off their bones uh, just like a nuclear explosion would do. It says, uh, verse uh, 20, And he commanded the most mighty men, not, not the scrawny little privates, no, the muscle-bound staff sergeants and gunnery sergeants. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, and the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. In other words, uh, he was astonished. Yeah. He was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto him, or unto the king, True, O king! He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. Make sure you have a King James Bible. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Because if you don't have a King James Bible, then Daniel 3.25 doesn't say the Son of God. It says a son, small s, of the gods, G-O-D-S. That's Jehovah's That's right. Your Bible says the Son, Amen. capital S, of God, Amen. capital G. Amen. And that's the correct reading. Amen. And the new King James is subtle and puts it in there. The Son of God. Does it say the Son of God in the new yes, King it James? Does. Yeah. Yes, it does. I tell you what, in the ESV it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the rest of them is a, a, a Son of God. A yeah. Son of God. All of them. That's a good point. All of them. That's a good point. So King James, New King James, New King James only are only ones with the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Now, some would say, well, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was a heathen Gentile king. He wouldn't know about who the Son of God is. That's right. Oh, I don't know. You might be surprised what old Nebuchadnezzar may have known yeah. with yeah. Daniel in his cabinet. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. That's right. Who was on his cabinet? Yeah. Daniel, Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, you might be surprised about what he may have known about the Son of God. Uh, listen here, before Daniel ever lived or came into this world, Solomon told you there was a Son of God That's right. in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. That's right. What is his Son's name? Who hath ascended into heaven? Who hath descended? What is his Son's name? If thou canst tell. Uh, the psalmist in Psalm 2 said, Kiss the Son, capital S, lest he be angry. There was, a, there was Old Testament references to the Son of God Amen. before the time of Daniel. And don't think that Daniel might not have shared those with old King Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar didn't say, A Son of the Gods. And don't come talking at me at the Hebrew. <laughs> well, the Hebrew says. I ain't worried about what the Hebrew says. I got a 1611 King James Bible. Amen. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> God got it right in 1611. <laughs> there ain't no need to change it in 2018. No, you got that right. Lester Roloff said the KJV doesn't need to be rewritten. It needs to be reread. Amen, Brother Roloff. Yeah, yes. Amen. Right. Hey. When you get this one down, we can start talking about revising it. Amen. amen. <laughs> but until you got this one down, let's just leave perfection alone. Amen. 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 The Son of God. Verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, 
And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Now you tell me, God, what in that? Listen here, if you barbecue in your backyard, that's all you got to do to get the smell of smoke. No, I if I want the smell of smoke, all I got to do is go stand out in front of the church house with some of you. Right. Come on, brother. If I want the smell of smoke on me, I just go stand next to some of y'all out front. You know what, folks? If you're going to smoke, don't do it in front of the house of God. Amen. Don't do it in front of the house that's of God. Right. Show some respect. Go over to 7-Eleven. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's you're welcome. Amen. I'm not even going to charge you any extra love offering. That was free. And so it says, verse 28, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word. You talk about some humble pie. You think old Nebuchadnezzar was used to having his word changed? All right, listen here. At Nebuchadnezzar's word, men lived or men died. Yeah. Everybody bowed before the will of Nebuchadnezzar. He was the greatest king the world had ever seen to that point. Yes. Right. At his word, things were done or not done. But he acknowledged here that this angel that was sent from God, this son of God, had changed the king's word. It says, and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Amen. Therefore, I make a, a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Amen. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. He would already promoted them in chapter 2, verse 49. Uh, now here in chapter 3, verse 30, he promotes them again. And so tonight, with the help of the Lord for a few minutes, I'd like to preach on this subject, grace under fire. Grace under fire. Let's pray. Our Father in God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the freedom and liberty in America Amen. to gather here once again tonight to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I thank you for Pastor Gibson. I thank you for his wife. Lord, I thank you for their faithfulness to this church over many, many years, dear God. And thank you, Lord, that the doors of this church are still open uh, as a beacon and as a light uh, to the lost and dying world here in Hampton Roads. And, Lord, I pray that you continue to bless this church as it preaches on the streets and knocks on doors and hands out gospel tracts. And, Lord, uh, puts forth these broadcasts and does everything we can do, Lord, to be a witness for you uh, here in Norfolk and the other six cities of, uh, of Hampton Roads, Lord. And, Father, we just pray, God, that you bless the services tonight. Uh, thank you, for, Lord, for the hymn we sung, for the special from James. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the time of prayer with the prayer requests. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the time of fellowship. And now, Lord, we thank you for this time of the preaching of your word. And, Lord, we pray that you'll have your will and way. And, dear God, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Grace under fire. In Daniel chapter 3, we find God's people put in a bad spot. It's easy to stand for God and worship God when things are going well. Yeah, you got a point. But the true test of what type of faith that you and I have right. is when we find ourselves in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. When we look at fire in the Bible, fire has many purposes. But there's two that stand out to me in tonight's message. The first reason for fire is purification. Amen. Right. Let's look at a couple of passages that illustrate this. Take your Bible and come to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Get 1 Corinthians 3 in one hand, and then get 1 Peter chapter 1 in the other. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is teaching the Corinthians about the subject of the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And he says, verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, yep. He says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. So when we get saved, Jesus Christ is the foundation. Once you're saved and you've established Jesus as that foundation, as a Christian, you begin to build on that foundation. You either build by 
faithful works, gold, silver, precious stones, or you build with unfaithfulness, wood, hay, or stubble. Right. Notice uh, gold, silver, precious stones, things to be desired, wood, hay, or stubble, things not to be desired. Right. And so it says, verse 13, that every man's work shall be made manifest. And so not everything that looks like gold and silver and precious stones in front of men may be that way at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, there's some folks that they may look like they have it all together down here as far as gold, silver, and precious stones, but at the judgment seat of Christ, if the motive wasn't right, that stuff may show up as wood, hay, and stubble. Amen. And so it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, the day of Christ, shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. All right, now watch this. Gold, silver, and precious stones, what happens when you throw that in the fire? It gets purified. Purifies, purifies, brother. Yeah. Purifies, it refines. You know, Proverbs talks about a fining pot, right? right. So you put silver uh, and, and heat it up, you know what happens? All the impurities float to the top, and you scrape that off, and what's that called? Dross. Proverbs calls that dross. And so that's all those impurities. You scrape that off, and you've got to refine silver. So when you apply heat or fire to gold, silver, or precious stones, you're just going to refine it. That's right. What happens when you apply heat or fire to wood, hay, and stubble? It burns up. Burns up. It's going to be a glorified ashtray. That's right. It's going to be a glorified ashtray like out front, amen. That's right. And so it says this. If any man's work, verse 14, abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Amen. John says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we might receive a full reward. A Christian can lose rewards, not salvation. That's right. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned. There's that wood, hay, and stubble. It's not purified. It's not refined. It's burned. He shall suffer loss. The loss of rewards, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Mm. And so the first thing we see about fire is fire purifies. Purify. Uh, notice, if you will, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, we see this same concept. 1 Peter chapter 1, you got Hebrews, James, 1 Peter. Uh, Hebrews, or excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 1. And 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again Amen. unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept, not by your own power, amen, who are kept by the power of God, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Oh, wow. That was what was going on with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory, a glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Sometimes God puts his people through fiery trials. Sometimes he puts them in the fiery furnace. And so the first thing we see the fire does is it purifies. Number two, I want to say this. The second thing the fire does is it punishes. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Not only does it purify, but it also punishes. Remember that rich man? What did that rich man say in Luke 16? He said, I am tormented in what? This flame. This flame. He was tormented in that flame, right? Luke chapter 16. We'll look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Here's the renovation of the earth by fire. Uh, here's some uh, purification as well as punishment. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. 
And so someday God's going to melt this thing. He's going to, he's going to destroy it by fire. Uh, he destroyed it by a flood the first time. That's He'll right. destroy it the second time by fire. That's right. And so uh, one more on this one. Uh, come to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And look what, what we see here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, it says, um, verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Oh. And so I, I told you two things, really three things, really, because uh, we see that that reference in 2 Peter 3, that's a, pure, or that, that's a purging. That's a purging. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, that's more of a purification. And then here in 2 Thessalonians 1, uh, that's a punishment. So we see those, I said two, it's actually three uh, uh, uses of fire in the Bible as far as purging, purification, and punishment. Mm -hmm. And so here in Daniel chapter 3, I believe what the Lord is doing is he's purifying his people. He's purifying his people. He's putting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and the reason why he's doing that is to refine them and to make them better for the circumstance. And you know what? Maybe tonight uh, you're going through a fiery trial yourself. Now, you may not be in the fiery furnace as far as you've been arrested by the king and thrown into jail and, and all that stuff you know, for breaking the law and so forth, but you might be having a fiery trial as far as your health. Uh, you might be having a fiery trial as far as your relationships, whether it's your spouse or your kids or someone else. Uh, you might be having a fiery trial as far as your finances, a bill that you can't pay or something like that. Uh, sometimes we find ourselves in the fiery trials. But listen here, when God puts his people through the fire, there's always a purpose behind it. Right. And so the first thing we notice about Daniel chapter 3 is the direction of the society. The direction of the society. You know, in verses 1 through 7, we see Nebuchadnezzar uh, making this image and then commanding that everyone worship this image and that anyone that will not worship the image is going to face the death penalty. And so we see the direction of society, and the direction of society in this case was not working for God's people. It was working against God's people. And you know what? It's the same way for us in 2018. Right. Hey, listen here. Uh, as the sodomites get more rights, it seems apparent that we're getting less. Uh, as the wickedness of this world seems to be more loved, those who preach righteousness in Jesus Christ seem to be more hated. Uh, I don't know about you, but just like Daniel chapter 3, I see the direction of society moving against us. Amen. Now, we haven't got to the point yet where uh, an image has been set up and we have to bow down before that image. But don't worry, that day is coming. It sure is. That day is coming. Now, I'm grateful that by the grace of God, the Bible says that He has not appointed us unto wrath, but unto salvation. Yeah. And so the rapture is going to take place before the Antichrist ever sets up that image. I'm glad we won't be here to see that and so yeah. forth. But you can say what you want to. Those tribulation saints, they're going to have to go through that. Yeah. And they're going to have to decide whether or not they've got faith in God or whether they're going to bow down to the politics of this world. Uh, right now, we may not be uh, threatened by being cast into a fiery furnace, but listen here, did you all just get a, 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 a arrested or a threatened with arrest here a few weeks ago as far as preaching at the football game? Here's the saints showing up at Old Dominion using the freedom of speech that the First Amendment grants to us. Right. And trying to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to all them heathens as they're coming in and out of uh, you know uh, uh, the football stadium and all that stuff. And here comes the police and threatening them with arrest. Yep. I know what that's like. Been there, done that. Same thing happened to Calvary Baptist Church in Beaufort, South Carolina in 1992 and 93. Uh, listen here, the merchants on downtown on Bay Street, they got upset because Brother Baker and the saints were coming down there and preaching. And so they passed an ordinance against loud and unseemly noise. <laughs> but it's kind of funny how it worked out. They was only enforcing that against the street preachers. You could go through there with your uh, boom box in your car, yeah. blaring away with the max bass, uh, playing ungodly rap music or something like that. The police weren't giving out no tickets for that. 
But boy, if you showed up with a Bible under your arm and some gospel tracts in your hand and cupped your hand and said, Thus saith the Lord, you was getting ticketed and you was getting arrested. You say, how do you know? I got arrested. <laughs> Many times. Needless to say, the Navy was not very happy with me over this. My commanding officer said that if I got arrested one more time, he was going to kick me out of the Navy. So I got arrested one more time and the picture showed up in USA Today. <laughs> And so my mom wrote Senator Robert Byrd. Now, you know me, I don't have much use for Democrats, but i got to give uh, uh, Robert Byrd his props. Um, you know, when my mom wrote him a letter telling him what was going on, he sent a letter to my uh, CO with a congressional inquiry wanting to know why the Navy was trying to kick his constituent out of the Navy. <laughs> Needless to say, the Navy backtracked and said, oh, that's one of our best petty officers, Senator Byrd. We have no intentions of separating him. <laughs> Amen. And so by the grace of God, you know, uh, my naval career was able to continue. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, but we were getting arrested. Now, eventually, the federal courts ruled in our favor. But listen here, before the federal courts uh, ruled in our favor, uh, several of our men went to jail. Two of our men, including Pastor Baker himself, got sent to the state penitentiary for three months. Wow. When Brother Baker showed up at, uh, at the penitenti uh, penitentiary, you know what the warden told him? He said, Reverend Baker, someone's trying to teach you a lesson. And Brother Baker said, well, I'm ready to learn, Warden. <laughs> uh, they was doing body, uh, body cavity searches. When they, was getting, when they got arrested, they stripped these men naked and explored their secret parts to make sure they weren't hiding contraband. <coughs> they weren't worried about no contraband. You know what they was trying to do? They was trying to intimidate these preachers that if you're going to break the law and preach the gospel anyway, we're going to make you pay for it. Yeah. Mm. Several of the men lost their jobs. And when this thing was all over with, though, um, the church won the case. The federal courts ruled in our favor. And those men received restitution as far as those that had lost their jobs. And so God brought a mighty victory. But let me tell you something. There were some dark times in that church. There's some dark times. How do you think the church reacted for those three months while the pastor's away in the state penitentiary? Don't think that there wasn't some fear and anxiety within the church, because there was. Because, listen here, who's next? Because if we keep preaching, they're going to come after all of us before it's over with, right? And so watch this. That's 1992. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's better or worse now? Worse. Oh, it's worse now. It's a lot worse. Uh, let me tell you something. The sodomites were still too ashamed to come out of the closet in 92. Right, yeah, back, then, yeah. back then they were. Yeah. Oh, there, there, there were some sodomites, don't get me wrong. Yeah, was, not like there is now. That's right. Oh, listen here. They're going into the schools now. Yeah. Drag queens coming in to teach your boys and girls from kindergarten on up that it's okay whichever sex they want to like and that nobody should tell them uh, you know who to like and who to love and, and all that. And listen here, you don't even have to be a boy if you don't want to. You can be a little girl if you want. Man. And if you're a little girl, you can be a boy if you want because nobody should be able to tell you what your gender is. I'm sorry, little, little darling. Let your mama take you in the bathroom and look in your drawers and we'll know in about two seconds what your gender is. <laughs> And I don't care what Amen. the drag queen says. Yeah. I don't care what the yeah. sodomite says. Uh, listen yeah. here. Uh, isn't it amazing that the same crowd that always wants to talk to us about science and biology when discussing the issue of evolution and creation, the same crowd that wants to preach science, they completely lose their minds when it comes to science over something as simple as gender. Gender is not a social construct. Gender is a matter of biology and genitalia. That's what gender is. And so it's not what you feel you are, it's what you are. Amen. It's not what you think you are, it's what God made you. Yes. And so society is going in the wrong direction. The direction of society is moving against God, not for God. And that's the day and time we live in. Yes. Let me say something to you. If the Lord tarries another five to ten years... The message I'm preaching tonight, or if Brother Gibson preaches something similar, will have us arrested and thrown in jail. You mark my words within the next five to ten years, if it takes even that long. Do you realize this message tonight would get me arrested both in Canada and in the UK? Especially since we're broadcasting this publicly. We're not doing this thing in secret. We're putting this thing out on Facebook and YouTube. 
And so we're not hiding what we teach and believe here. Amen. And so anybody around the world can get a hold of this video and watch this thing. Amen. And so we're not doing this thing in secret. We're doing it openly and publicly. And someday, I'm telling you, they're going to come through that back door right there and they're going to leave this man and probably several others of us out of here in handcuffs because we're preaching hate. Mm. We ain't preaching hate. We're preaching the truth. Yeah. And nobody, right. nobody ever loved you any more than the fellow that will tell you the truth. Amen. That's right. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, yeah. but the kisses Amen. of an enemy Amen. are deceitful. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the Amen. truth? Yeah. Grace under fire. And so the direction of society was going against these three young men. But number two, I want to say this. Not only do we see the direction of society, but we also see the dedication of the saints. The dedication of the saints. Uh, although society was moving against them as far as politics and social issues, these three young men stood by their convictions. Uh, verse 13, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before uh, the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. You know, uh, here's what they do today. Uh, they bring you uh, uh, in on your job. Uh, you know, well, what is this thing I saw you post on Facebook against LGBT? Are you not for LGBT? That's right. Uh, there's folks that have lost their jobs because of their personal, deeply held religious views. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, uh, for the record and for the sake of our video audience, I proudly support LGBT. I proudly support it. No, I'm not talking about Flasky wearing women's shoes. <laughs> Amen. What, what are you wearing tonight, Flasky? I've got shoes on. Let me see your feet. All right, that's okay. I'm just checking. <laughs> I forgot to look at your shoes before I got up here to preach. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. The folks out there in video land, they're like, what is going on between him and Flasky? He's always picking on Flasky. That's because I love Brother Jim. And if y'all didn't watch his sermon this morning, y'all need to get on the Facebook page and watch Brother Jimmy's sermon from Galatians chapter 3. Amen. He was even wearing the red shirt of power this morning. Amen. I'm trying out a black shirt tonight. I've never preached in a black shirt, so I'm seeing how that works out tonight. Amen. Because me and Jimmy, we're so carnal, we think that the color of our shirt has to do with how much power we got. Amen. But listen here, I support LGBT. Only I support a different kind of LGBT than what the world supports. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, they support Adam and Steve. I still believe it's Adam and Eve, amen? amen. But I support this kind of LGBT. Let God be true. Amen. 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 That's the kind of LGBT I support. Right. Let God be true. And so, uh, here, uh, uh, old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, evidently they posted something on Facebook or Twitter that the king didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. And so he hauls them in because of their social media accounts. Yeah. And says, is it true that you're not worshiping my gods or my golden image? <laughs> Verse 15. He wants to give them a second chance, though. He's a fair kind of guy, right? Now, if ye be ready, verse 15, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbutt, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made? Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Well, you're about to find out, Nebuchadnezzar. That's right. You're about to find out who their God is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Philippians 4, verse 6. Would you turn there? Philippians 4, verse 6. Verses quoted, I want you to read it for yourself. Philippians 4, 6. Now it said... We are not careful to answer thee, O king, right? right. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for what? Nothing. Nothing. What is careful? Full of care. Yeah. Alert. Worried. Right. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anxious. Be careful. Be full of care for 
nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We not only see the direction of society here, we see the dedication of the saints. Amen. It says, verse 17, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. God's able. Well, watch this. William Tyndale was burned at the stake. What was the last things on his lips before he died? Anybody remember? Open the eyes of the king. Open the eyes of the king. Oh, Lord, open the eyes of the king. Do you know what happened less than 100 years later? James IV of Scotland became James I of England. And do you know what he did in, in, in 1604 when he became king? He authorized a translation of the Bible that later would bear his name. And from 1607 to 1611, those 54 translators worked on that glorious book. And in 1611, that thing rolled off the presses. Amen. And do you know what? For more than 300 years, it was the standard English Bible. And do you know that even now in 2018, who knows what the best-selling translation of the Bible is in 2018? The King James Bible. No, sir. The NIV. The NIV, the NIV is the best-selling translation as far as English Bibles. But do you know what the most widely read version is? It's not even close. King James, 55% of the people that read the Bible read the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. NIV is like around 19%. That's the second closest one. Mm -hmm. And so even though the, King, or the NIV outsells, because of how long the King James has been around, almost everybody's got one. Yeah. <laughs> and you can say what you want to. Listen here. When I listen to the radio and hear these radio preachers and things like that, uh, listen here. It's real uh, clear which one's preaching the right. book and which one's not. Right. Amen. You know, Amen. The Bible says uh, that his sheep hear not the voice of strangers, man. Boy, there's nothing like the music of a King James Bible when it's being read by Alexander Scorby or when it's being preached by a man of God full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. And so it says here in uh, Daniel uh, chapter 3, verse 17, uh, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, if he doesn't, if God chooses not to, like William Tyndale, could God have saved him? Could have. Sure he could have. Tyndale, the reason why he was burned at the stake is he got betrayed by one of his friends. One of his friends ratted him out and told the Catholics where he was, and they came and got him and burned him at the stake. Could God have delivered him and provided a path to escape for him? Sure, of course. Yeah. Sure, he could have. But you know what? Even after he was dead, that's all them dirty, rotten Catholics could do to him. <laughs> well, yeah. Once they burned him at the stake, Brother Jimmy, there's nothing else they could do to him. Yeah. And I say dirty, rotten Catholics. I, I ought not to say things like that. You know why? Because we're all a bunch of dirty, rotten sinners. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so, uh, listen here. Uh, there's plenty of non-Catholics that have committed atrocities too. Uh, I, I don't want to unnecessarily offend anyone that's out there. Uh, God wants to save anybody. Jew, Protestant, Catholic, Baptist, Mormon, whatever. Amen? Amen. Amen. But listen here. Uh, 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 those Catholics, Amen. once they burned him at the stake, they had no more power over him nope. because he was with the Lord. Amen. And do you know what? 80% of your King James Bible is based on the work of William Tyndale. Oh, yeah. Because those translators, when they, when they worked on the Bible, they referred to the previous English translations, and one of the main ones they relied on was Tyndale's. Mm -hmm. And to this day, many of Tyndale's readings still live on in the King James Bible. God opened the King of England's eyes. You know what? God answered that prayer. Tyndale had to burn at the stake for it to happen. Mm -hmm. But God answered that prayer in a mighty way. And the proof of it is what you hold in your hands Amen. tonight. Amen. 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 Grace under fire. Uh, listen here. The direction of society, the dedication of the saints. You know, you've heard of William Tyndale, but I wonder how many millions of Christians down through the decades and down through the centuries have been through the same kind of thing. You never heard of them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we've, we've heard of them because forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. 
And so their names are memorialized in the Word of God. I wonder how many faithful Christians we don't even know about when we get to heaven. I wonder how many thrilling stories we're going to hear about sacrifices of people we never even knew existed yeah. Yeah. as far as the exploits they did for God. Yeah. I can't wait. And listen here, I've got all eternity to hear every single story, <laughs> and the ones that I really like, I can listen to them again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Grace under fire. Amen. The direction of society. The dedication of the saints. Number three, let me say this, the displeasure of the sinful. The displeasure of the sinful. I'll just hear, when you rebel against the, uh, uh, the word of the king, when you rebel against uh, the, the politics of this world, what's the reaction, positive or negative? Negative. This world hates you for it. Mm -hmm. Listen here, when you say it's sin uh, uh, for someone to have uh, you know, an affair with someone that's not their wife uh, or their husband, they hate you for that. Amen. Uh, even in John the Baptist day, it's not lawful for thee to have thy brother Philip's wife. What happened to John? His head got served on a silver charger. Ain't nothing changed. They still hate you for preaching the truth. Uh, when you say that abortion is murder and the shedding of the innocent blood of the unborn uh, is murder and so forth, they hate you for that. Uh, when you say, like I said earlier, that it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, they hate you for that. Uh, when, when you tell young people that they're not supposed to shack up and live together uh, like a bunch of heathen because the Bible says that marriage is honorable and all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and Amen. adulterers, God will judge. When you tell them that, they hate you for that. They hate you for that. Uh, listen here, some of our own children don't like it when we tell them the truth on these matters. Yes, the truth. The displeasure of the sinful. In verse 19, Nebuchadnezzar is full of fury. His visage changes, and he orders the furnace to be heated up seven times more than what it was normally heated. And so the displeasure of the sinful, they don't like it when God's people are dedicated. That's right. But what did Peter say in Acts chapter 5? We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. You know, later here in the book of Daniel in chapter 6, there's a law that's going to get passed that says that nobody can pray to anyone but the king for 30 days. Do you know what Daniel does? He goes into his chamber, opens up his curtains, and bows his face towards Jerusalem three times a day like he had always done before. And what happened to him? He found himself in a lion's den. But just like the Son of God showed up with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Lord is going to show up in that lion's den too. So I don't care if he puts you in the fiery furnace or if he puts you in the lion's den. You just trust the fact that wherever he puts you, he's going to be there with you Amen. going through whatever you're going Amen. through. Amen. And don't ever forget that he went through much worse on the cross. The displeasure of the sinful. Uh, number four, let me say this briefly. The deliverance of the son. In verse 24 to 27, we see that Nebuchadnezzar is astonished. He's shocked. He looks into that fire, and listen here. He sees four men, not three men. And the fourth man is like the Son of God. And so he knows that something is different about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego now. He knows that something is different about their God because no God can deliver after this man. They come out of that fire, and there's not even the smell of smoke on them. It's just not possible. That's completely impossible. And so Nebuchadnezzar gets his eyes open to this thing because he sees the deliverance of God's Son. God will deliver his people. Always, always. It just may not happen in this life. It's, there's not always a miraculous deliverance like this, is there? You know, we mentioned William Tyndale. Where was his miraculous deliverance? Mm -hmm. He didn't experience what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. He actually died. And I promise you, the smell of smoke did pass on him. But you know what? In either case, yeah. you see the deliverance of God. Yeah. Because once they've destroyed that body, they can't do mm -hmm. anything to your soul. Amen. And so here's the thing. I don't know what's in store for us. No. I, I know that I see the direction of society. It's moving against us, yeah. and it's moving against God. Yeah. And so I don't know if we're going to end up in a fiery furnace or in a lion's den or whatever else before the Lord comes. I just know this, that whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, 
God will be right there with us, and he'll be faithful to us, just like he was to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And listen here, just like he was to William Tyndale. Because what are the rewards of William Tyndale <coughs> going to be at the judgment seat of Christ? The man that gave us the English Bible. I wonder what his rewards might be. Because there would have never been a King James Bible if there wasn't a William Tyndale one first. That's right. Grace under fire. The last thing I want to give you is this. We see the direction of society, the dedication of the saints, the displeasure of the sinful, the deliverance of the Son. But last of all, we see the declaration of the standard. The declaration of the standard. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's words, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree, here's the standard being declared, that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the province of Babylon. Grace under fire. I don't know what your fiery trial is, but I know whatever it is, God will walk with you while you go through it. And if things ever get as intense as what they got for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, listen here. Whether the, uh, the, the smell of smoke passes on you or not, God's still going to deliver you. It may not be in this life, yeah. but it's certainly in the life to come. And so I just want to encourage every one of us to have that grace under fire, to trust in God and put our faith in the Lord, that come whatever, come whatever may, Let's aspire to be as dedicated as what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were. You know what? That wasn't even their real names. You know, when they got captured, old Nebuchadnezzar, he changed their Hebrew names to those Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what that shows me? You can change a man's name, but that doesn't change his character. Amen. You can change a man's name, that doesn't mean you're going to change his character. Amen. And although they may have been given Babylonian names, they still had character to honor the Lord God Jehovah mm -hmm. of the Old Testament. Amen. Let you and I do the same thing. Amen. Amen. Let's Lord. stand for prayer. Yeah. Our Father in God, thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Lord, thank you once again for this opportunity to preach. Lord, I pray the word of God has not fallen on deaf ears. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit has borne witness to this word tonight. And, Lord, I pray that you'd encourage the heart of every believer. And, Lord, I pray if there's anyone in our midst tonight that's not saved, Lord, I pray that you'd save the soul that's closest to hell. Lord, I pray they might understand sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. Lord, I pray they might experience repentance towards God and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Help them to know that Christ died for their sins according to the Scriptures, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. We just pray that any lost soul might be born again by the Spirit of God tonight according to your will. And now, Lord, bless us as we go into this week. Lord, we know that the direction of society is moving against us. Yeah. But, Lord, help us to have the same dedication that these three saints had in Daniel chapter 3. And, Lord, if the time comes, we just pray for the, uh, the deliverance of your son as it's needed. And, Lord, we'll thank you for these things. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Please watch over us now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Preacher? All right. Yes, sir. You dismissed. Praise the Lord. Good night. Hey, very, very intelligent. Preaching on that great tribulation, bro. <laughs>